to get into boxing. Um, I think I was a natural athlete already. And I was basically, my mum said I came out running. <laughs> so from day one, I was active. I was very physical. I was jumping. I wanted to be Spider-Man. I wanted to be Hulk. So I was already into those things. My academic skills weren't that, I didn't have any confidence in that as such. Um, you know, later on find out I was good at that. <laughs> but at the time, I didn't really understand it. So uh, sport was my way of getting through life at the time. And I was doing athletics and I was doing judo at a high level. And I was always into sports, um, representing England in those. So I was already going down the sports line. And then um, my friend said, hey, we went to this gym, this boxing gym. And I went, oh yeah, down Gill Street. I was oh yeah. So I went down with them and um, I walked into this gym and it was um, not what I expected. It was, it was dirty, <laughs> it was smelly, it was cold. And yeah, I couldn't take the cold weather. I think it lasted about two weeks. I remember doing press-ups and I had to drop on the floor and do press-ups and there was blood there and there was spit there and I was like going, <laughs> trying to do press-ups, thinking, this is nasty. <laughs> and I think I lasted about, what, two weeks and then I came out of it. And then then um, I met a, a, a ch uh, the coach there was Mickey Lynch, who then became like a father figure to me. And uh, he kind of had seen something in me. And because then I turned up, my mates kept saying, uh, Mickey keeps asking for you. I goes, what me? He goes, why me? He goes, I don't know. He just keeps asking for you. And I goes, when are you going to come back? I goes, right. So I kept hearing this interest in me. So I came back and then uh, my coach, Mickey, sat me down and goes, I didn't know where you're back. I goes, um, mm, yeah, 13 year old. Yeah, he goes, yeah. He goes, um, um, do you like boxing? I goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put on the spot kind of. He goes, right, okay, okay. Um, just sit on, the, sit on that sofa over there. So there's a sofa in his room, looking at all the guys doing their workouts. So I sat on the sofa and uh, I thought, okay. So I've got 15 minutes, everybody had gone on a run, come back and I was on the bags and I was training. So I thought, um, I go to the coach, can I come and train? He goes, oh, no, 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 no. You sit down on that coach for a bit. He made me sit there for the whole session. And then at the end of the session, he goes, are you coming on Thursday? And that'll be a Tuesday. And I goes, um, yeah, yeah. So I come on the next Tuesday or next Thursday and I sat down and he made me do the same thing again. He made me sit on a, on a couch and watch. So this happened for about two weeks and I got angry. I said, I'm not sitting on the coach anymore, on a couch anymore. And he says, so you want to box? And I goes, yeah. He goes, are you sure you want to box? I goes, yeah. He goes, I have to be sure because you're going places. And that was it. And my boxing took off. <laughs> Brown is a really good prospect. He's only 21. England international, had a win against Poland this season, won against Ireland. In the England semi-finals at Gloucester, he knocked out his opponent, Billy Neal from Sunderland, in 2 minutes 59. Then he had that 148 win in the national semi-finals. Brilliant junior, won every sort of title you can as a junior. And he's got some future. I think it came down to somebody that was paying attention to me and that meant a lot to me. And, and so having me sit there definitely did something to me because if I was half-hearted about it, and this game you can't be half-hearted about, it, you've got to be fully committed. And I've seen a lot of kids come in and they, and they train and they miss four or five weeks and they come back again and they, they dabble with it and they just disappear. That made me never ever miss a training session. That two weeks of sitting on a chair, watching the kids do it, and I wanted to train, it made me understand that I actually want to do this. And I was like, yeah. So I, to this point, I have never really ever missed a training session. You know, and I feel even if I got there for like the last 20 minutes of the session, I would run there and get there. And my friends started to go, when I was playing football, they'd be going, yo, Nev, Nev, it's nearly half past six, mate. And I was like, ah! I'd be late sometimes, but I'd always be at the gym because of that two weeks of making me watch. It made me feel, it kind of disciplined me mentally, got me triggered to be at the gym. Even if I'm ill, I've been in the gym with a broken leg, I've been in the gym with crap ribs, and I've still been there training, even if I'm not in full shape. And it's just, it's a home away from home. <laughs> In my little head, I was, I was Spider-Man, I was the Hulk, I was, 
I was the best jumper. I was the best runner. I was uh, that was my way in life. That was me championing, championing myself. I'm a champion. I championed myself by being the best at whatever. And and so I'd outrun people. I'd outrun distance sprints. You name it. I'd out beat people all the time. So obviously it's, it's all about energy. So it was the run around the park, no problem. Back in the gym, and it was press ups, no problem. And it was squat throws, no problem. Punching the bag, okay. Scrapping, but I just got stuck into the bag. And then the coach would come along and, and, and fix my shoulders and fix my arms. And then said, right, now slow down, <laughs> pace yourself. And everything was like, remember, this, this is not, a, this is not a, a sprint, this is a long distance. And uh, you're gonna learn a lot about how to handle yourself on the street and in school and in life by preparing yourself now. And I thought, what's, what's the street got to do with this? Being young. So, um, and obviously I turned the heads of the coaches and I turned the heads of the kids because I was always winning. And, but I didn't understand the boxing side of it. I didn't like boxing, I made any sense. When I got hit, uh, I wanted to play another sport. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like golf or snooker, uh, this hitting malarkey, I didn't like it. And then the coach explained to me, he said, um, we're gonna teach you the art of defense. It's, the, the boxing is about, uh, it's the art of not being hit. And I thought, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I then kind of became Spider-Man in my head, where I'd avoid punching, avoid shots, and that became very tricky to hit. And it took off from there. And that I enjoyed. The ducking and diving and not getting hit and coming out the ring and like, yeah, I felt like Spider-Man. I felt like the bullets were flying at me and I was doing the Matrix and I was, and I thought, yeah, I like this, I like this, this, this I like. And that's how I took off. And that's how the boxing, to me, made sense. It had to make sense to me, otherwise I wouldn't follow it through. Tremendous victory over the 18-year-old Pole Zhmian, who turned away after the standing count and didn't want to continue. So Brown, the son of a Jamaican father and an English mother, serves notice there that uh, all the other light middleweights in the country are better watch out when the ABA championships get underway. My parents didn't read to me. They didn't, they had battles going on. I was a mixed child. My battle, my dad was battling, come from Jamaica, and he was battling over here to put food on the table. My mum was battling. So things were going on. So I never had that sit down with my parents to, to read stuff. So I went to school, not really understanding how to read. And a woman called Miss Tyson, uh, of all names, sat me, sat me down and went, Mr. Brown. I was like, you're not, you're smarter than you think you are. And I went, uh, she told me to me because I just had no confidence in the academic side of things. And she made me learn me to read in six weeks and got me reading, catching the rest of the class, so now I could read. But up until then, the comics were my, the illustrations were my, I'd read into them. I'd read the pictures, going through them, watch the agility, watch the spinning, watch the Spider-Man, watch him ducking bullets. And by the time I got to the end of the story, I'd, I'd have it, I'd all in my head. The pictures told me everything. So when I come to read them, it didn't tell me anything different. So in all those visions I had, basically what I was doing already, what the, what the main thing today is to do in life, see your future, see a picture of what you want to do. So I would, had pictures built into me of heroes, spider heroes. The Hulk was a hero in my eyes, not the villain. <laughs> so I understood all these things and I kind of wanted to be something in my life. So that my connection then was through sport. So in the boxing, the matrix comes to mind, the avoiding punches, the slipping and the maneuvers. And that was what the condition and training was about. They were talking about Neville Brown doing what Whitaker did to Chavez and Leonard did to Hagler, being clever and frustrating him and sneaking in with punches and getting out of range, attacking him from different angles. And the plan is working well at the moment. And Grant is, for all his aggression, is finding it hard to get to his man. You gotta remember, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a youngster, and I'm at this place, and there's the street issues going on because there's bullies at school, and guess what? They're in the gym. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, Dean Gower, <laughs> what a name. So, great fighter, and I thought, oh no, he's in the gym. So you're in this gym, trying to avoid eye contact with these people, and at the same time, your coach is trying to get you to outrun, outmaneuver, out these, these so-called bullies. And he obviously was a great trainer and a great athlete himself, so he knew exactly what was going on. So he would be like having us, it shows, it showed me something on the back and he was surprised how well I could 
capture it. I could see something and do it. I could replicate it straight away. I was really good at those things, i.e. if I was in the comic magazines maybe, but I could, if someone showed me something, I could mimic it. And that's what I started to do, I started to mimic it. Uh, but I still had no self, I was just doing what I was told. There was a blue bag in front of me and I just pounded it until the bell went. And then and my coach said, right, okay, now we're gonna now start to put you towards the ring. Now the ring was supposed to be a white canvas floor. It was purple, it was dirty, and I didn't know what the purple bit was. It was a lot of purple. And I, I later found out that was blood. <laughs> so I was kind of like, yeah. Hmm. And I, so the first time I sparred, the first time I got a nosebleed. And I understood now why the canvas is this color. And I came out thinking, boxing's not for me. So I thought, I went away. And then that's when the coaches know if you have what it takes. And so I went away, missed a session, it was raining, that was my excuse. And when I walked in again, Mickey went to me, are you okay? I went, yeah, 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 fine. Good session the other day. Because I didn't think I'd got the better of the sparring. Because you only remember what you get hit with. You don't actually remember what you hit them with. So this is out of anger, it's, it's, it's out of control going on. And I remember thinking, I can't see anything. Hands are flying past me and you just react to their energy. And I remember catching him with a shot and, and, and he stumbled, not that I thought it was a stumble, that was what I caught him and he was off balance. And then the coach went, stop boxing! And I went, and you feel like you're being told off. And you get out of the ring and then I got my stuff together. It was really, it was, it was almost like, it was a fight, but it was a, in my head it was a fight. I didn't know what I was doing, so it was a fight. There was no control here, it was, I hit out this bigger kid, who's a bigger kid at school, so I had that psychology going on. I, I stumbled him and I came out of the ring and I thought I did something wrong. <laughs> I then reacted to what was going on and then I went away and thought about it then I came back and my coach went it's to hit somebody is an experience isn't it and I went uh, yeah and I thought how do you feel about it I goes um, I don't know I didn't know it was a, it was a strange feeling because it was fear so I didn't it was fear it was almost like I would kicked into my uh, I have to fight mode or I have to run mode but I'm in a cage, <laughs> so I can't run far, and I don't know where to run. So basically, I've got to attack the guy who's attacking me. Not that he was attacking me, but I had to defend myself. And that was a weird experience, because I kind of got heavy-handed with him, and they needed to see that if I was going to be in the boxing game. They've got to nurture that. They've got to nurture that power and that finesse you have. You make it look good. You, make, you look like you've been boxing for years. I think it's a spider magazine, magazines, really, but, you know, and that was it. So, boom. I just told him, he said, we're not going to spy you again for a while, right, and let me get back into it. And then they started monitoring me on the runs and the bag work. And he had a beautiful way of watching me train. He never, ever allowed me to overtrain. And I see that all the time nowadays. And in my losses, in my fights, I see where I've been overtrained. It's so hard to balance. But he, because he knew his business, he knew exactly how much to put in and what was needed. And... He said, you've got a bright future. Good shot there by Colo Russo. Back into the corner. Got through the good left foot. Oh, and again. No one ever wants to watch this. Oh, and a lovely uppercut there. Another lovely cut. Right hand. Oh, no. oh what a beautiful punch you put Colo Russo oh, down there. Oh, And just as Colo Colo Russo was getting through with some lovely looking punches. He looks very unsteady. He does, doesn't he? Looks very unsteady. Oh, 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 oh